What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and we are back with the Bhagavad Gita discussion. We will discuss the second verse of the first chapter today. We started with the first verse of the first chapter yesterday. If you have not watched then go and watch it. And if you are new to my channel then subscribe to it and like this video. The second verse of the first chapter is as follows and before beginning we make the prayer Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha This is a prayer because it is very important that we offer gratitude to our gurus, to our preceptors, whoever has given us the divine knowledge without whom we would have been suffering in this material existence for eternity. And this prayer specifically refers to removal of the darkness caused by the blindness of ignorance of the living entity who is suffering here in this material world from time and again time immemorial as it is written in the Gita. So when we make this prayer we are offering our gratitude to our gurus, to our preceptors and thanking them and requesting them to bless us to go ahead again. All right, let us begin with the second verse. Sanjay Uvacha. Whenever the verse begins, generally in many places it is said so and so Uvacha. XYZ Uvacha. Uvacha means said. So, for example, when it, whenever it is said Sanjay Uvacha, it means Sanjay said. Vacha is second house of speech. And Uvacha means to speak. So Sanjay Uvacha means Sanjaya speaks. Sanjay Uvacha Dhrishtva to Pandavanikam Vyudham Duryodhanas Tada Acharyam Upasanabhya Raja Vachanam Abravit. I will read the verse once again. It is good to read it thrice actually. Sanjayo vacha dhrishtva tu pandavanikam vyudham duryodhanastada acharyam upasanagmya raja vachanam abravit Sanjayo vacha dhrishtva tu pandavanikam vyudham duryodhanastada acharyam upasanagmya raja vachanam abravit Now we will read the translation. Sanjaya said, who is Sanjay? Sanjay is the charioteer of Dhritarashtra who is not in the battlefield but he is with Dhritarashtra in Hastinapur in the palace and he is teaching him by hearing what Krishna is telling or whatever is going on in the Kurukshetra because Vedvyas, the great sage who wrote these scriptures had given him a divine vision to sit in Kurukshetra and see whatever, uh, to sit in Hastinapur and see whatever is going on in Kurukshetra and report all these things diligently, point by point, to the king, the Dhrashtra, who is blind. Well, Vyasdev we we also asked the Dhrashtra to, if he needs this divine vision, which is known as Divya Drishti, but then uh, the Dhrashtra said, I have lived my whole life as a blind person. Now I do not have the strength to see the dead corpses of my sons or the dead corpses of my brother's sons. Well, he always used to say that I don't like to see the dead bodies of my brother's sons, but internally he always wanted that his sons won the match. Now, here, Sanjaya said, O king, after looking over the army arranged in military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhana went to his teacher and spoke the following words. Now, why is it mentioned King Duryodhana? Duryodhana is not the king, but why is it mentioned that he is the king? Because he is acting as an in charge, as the representative of his father, because his father is blind and he is not in the battlefield. That is why 
he is the eldest son of Dhritarashtra and he is acting as the king. He is almost as powerful as the king. Whatever he says will ultimately triumph. And whatever he wants, everybody will be executing it. Now let us read the purport. Dhritarashtra was blind from birth. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was also bereft of spiritual vision. This is actual blindness actually. He knew very well that his sons were equally blind. <laughs> he knew very well that his sons were equally blind in the matter of religion. My God. And he was sure that they could never reach an understanding with the Pandavas, who were all pious since birth. Look, the inner voice of Dhritarashtra always told that you cannot do it. But he was such a perfect, pretentious person, pretender, that he would pretend to himself that he is a very good person, he would win the match, he would win the war, his, his sons would sit in the throne. He knew it could not happen and he knew it is impossible because Krishna is there on the other side. But still he felt, maybe, maybe, maybe I can. Let's pretend. So, Dhritarashtra refers to the pretentious people around us who may or may not be with us in the spiritual path wherever we go towards God. But they may pretend to be with us, but actually they are not. <laughs> and they are doing everything to pull us down from the ladder of spiritual upliftment but they may sometimes behave as if they are very good, they are very kind to us, they want us to improve but that is unfortunately not the case and they may be blind or they may have the best of the eyesight but they will behave in ways that the Dhritarashtra behaved that is by being a hypocrite. So here he knew very well that his sons were equally blind in the matter of religion. See, because he is blind, so he knows my sons are also blind. <laughs> Not physically, in matters of religion and spirituality. And he was sure that they could never reach an understanding with the Pandavas who were all pious since birth. Pandavas were so great. Still he was doubtful about the influence of the place of pilgrimage and Sanjay could understand his motive in asking about the situation on the battlefield. See, there is always a gut feeling which tells you there is something wrong, you should not do it, do not do this. But still we do it, right? That is what is being told here. Sanjay could understand his motive in asking about the situation on the battlefield. See, because Dhritarashtra was apprehensive by knowing the holy nature of the place of Kurukshetra. And then he was doubtful that will this place, will the pious nature of this place benefit my sons? But internally he knew because his sons were fighting on the side of irreligion, they would only benefit the sons of Pandu, not his sons. All right. Therefore, Sanjaya is an expert subordinate. He understands the mind of his master and he speaks accordingly. Sanjaya wanted, therefore, to encourage the despondent king and thus assured him that his sons were not going to make any sort of compromise under the influence of the holy place. Now, Dhritarashtra and Sanjay are discussing that what has happened after the military formations have been formed in the war and Dhritarashtra wants to make sure that all the avenues for peace negotiations have ended. But still he is inquisitive to know that maybe because of the holy nature of the place, Duryodhana might not will. Duryodhana, maybe he might think to come to an agreement with the Pandavas. But Sanjaya tells him that 
they are not going to make any sort of compromise even though there is the influence of the holy place like Kurukshetra. Sanjaya therefore informed the king that his son Duryodhana after seeing the military force of the Pandavas at once went to the commander-in-chief Drona Acharya Senapati to inform him of the real position. Now why did he go to Dronacharya? Because now Bhishma was the main uh, the commander in chief whom everybody had to obey on the side of the Kurus. But why did Duryodhana go to Dronacharya not to Bhishma? Because Dronacharya was the one who taught everybody because Dronacharya taught both the Pandavas and the Kurus, the Kauravas. And Dronacharya was the teacher of all the Maharathis who were present in the battlefield. Almost all of them, not everybody. And that is why Duryodhana wants to make sure that Dronacharya is not only physically present in the battlefield. He is also mentally with all his heart and soul willing to fight the Pandavas because Dronacharya had terrible affection for the Pandavas. Why I say terrible? Because he loved them very much. Not only he, everybody loved them because they were very good, they were very respectful, they were very pious, they were very much virtuous. Everybody likes good people, right? That means Duryodhana wants to make sure that Dronacharya is on his side with all heart and soul. Now why he didn't go to Bhishma? Because Bhishma had already taken a vow that I will be faithfully, loyally like a servant serving the royal throne. So he is not very doubtful on Bhishma. Not that he is fully confident on Bhishma's presence mentally and physically. Physically he was there but he was also doubtful of Bhishma's presence mentally because Bhishma is also the grandfather of the Pandavas. So he also knew that he also had very much special affection for the Pandavas. But he was obliged because of his promise. At the same time, Dronacharya is not obliged. Although he is also self-obliged, means Dronacharya had been granted the position of the royal teacher, the person who will teach the prince and all the other royal sons to go into warfare and to fight but he voluntarily decided to take part in the war but Bhishma was obliged so Duryodhana was more or less confirmed that Bhishma is there on my side but Dronacharya he voluntarily came to repay the debts which he had towards the king so he wanted to make sure that this person is there with me. Therefore, he went at once to the commander-in-chief Dronacharya to inform him of the real position. Real position, we will see what the real position is. Although Duryodhana is mentioned as the king, he still had to go to the commander on account of the seriousness of the situation. He was therefore quite fit to be a politician. <laughs> but Duryodhana's diplomatic veneer could not disguise the fear he felt when he saw the military arrangement of the Pandavas. Although Duryodhana is mentioned as the king, he still had to go to the commander on account of the seriousness of the situation. What it means that although he was the king, acting as the king there, as the main, main man, but he was still apprehensive of his own strength. That is why he had to go to the commander on account of the seriousness of the situation. And internally his heart was trembling because he had seen the army formation of the Pandavas. And although he knew that my army is bigger than theirs, but he had this feeling inside that, I don't know if I will win because Krishna is there on their side. 
he was therefore quite fit to be a politician who is a politician who keeps going to different people asking for resources trying to get his things done and that is why he goes to dronachary and asks but duryodhana's diplomatic veneer could not disguise the fear he felt when he saw the military arrangement of the pandavas which means the mahabharat clearly tells that duryodhana was extremely fearful although he had 11 akshohinis and the pandavas had only 7 akshohinis akshohinis are army divisions it is like having 11 groups of army and having 7 groups of army and the number 18 is very prominent bhagavad gita has 18 chapters 108 is a holy number and the kurukshetra war went for 18 days and the total number of army formations were 18 in total 11 plus 7 18 akshohinis total all right so that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know and we will be reading one shloka from the gita every day from now on and i will try my best to upload it in the evening and if you are new to the channel then like this video and subscribe to my channel until next time bye bye see you